I think in 1992, I was at Whale and Dolphin Stadium when he arrived, and he's twice as large as the next animal in the facility. Yeah, he's right at about 12,000 pounds. That's that's incredible. He looks fantastic. When Tillicum arrived at SeaWorld, he was attacked viciously, repeatedly by Katina and others. In the wild, it's a very matriarchal society. Male whales are kept at the perimeter. In captivity, the animals are squeezed into very close proximity. Tillicum, the poor guy is so large, he couldn't get away because he just is not as mobile relative to the smaller and more agile females. And where was he going to run? There's no place to run. I think he spent a lot of time um, in isolation. And SeaWorld claims that, oh, no, he's always in with the other, with the females. But, I mean, I, you know, from what I saw, he was mostly put with the females for breeding purposes, and he didn't spend a lot of time um, you know, with the other whales. It's for his own protection. You know, he gets beat up. And so by segregating him, it provides a physical barrier so the females can't kick his butt. Tilcom is pretty much kept in the back and then brought out at the very end is like the, the big splash. He was uh, always happy to see you in the morning. Maybe because he was alone, maybe because he was hungry, maybe because he just liked you. Who knows what was going on in his head. Want to whistle? He seemed to like to work. He seemed to be interested. He seemed to want to learn new things. Um, he seemed to be enjoying, you know, working with the trainers. He, for me, was uh, a joy. He really responded to me, and I, um, you know, every day I went to work, I was happy to see Tilly. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> You're being too cute. I never got the impression of him while I was there that, you know, oh my God, you know, he's the, he's the scary whale, you know, not at all. Maybe some of it's just our uh, naivety or whatever, you know, because we weren't given the full details of Kelty's situation. I was under the impression that Tillicum had nothing to do with her death, specifically that it was the female whales responsible for her death. What I found really odd at first was the way they were acting around this whale and what they had told us seemed to me to be two different things. The first day he arrived, I remember one of the senior trainers at, at SeaWorld, she, uh, Tillicum was in a pool and she was walking over a gate and she had her wetsuit unzipped and was tied around her waist and, um, and she was making cooing noises and going, hey, Tillicum, you know what a cute little whale, and she was, you know, she was like just, you know, kind of play talking at him and um, one of the supervisors said, get her out of there and just screamed at her, you know, like, get her, get her away from there, like they were so worried that something was going to happen and I remember thinking, why are you guys making such a big deal out of this when he didn't actually kill her? Well, clearly management thought there was there was some reason to exercise caution around him. You know, it's, it's clearly they, they knew more than they were telling us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the next few behaviors you're going to be seeing, you can only see you right here at SeaWorld. Jeff was out in the audience filming a, one of the Shambu shows. It was a perfect show. All of the hot dog sequences, the waterworks sequences went off great. 